Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House and Pace Farm. Northwest of Brisbane in Queensland, there's a place called Mullaney. There's been a washout due to bad weather and an event has been cancelled. But what do you know? The gearheads up here have found a suitable replacement on this week's episode of Classic Restos. <laughs> One yearly event that has etched itself into this part of Queensland is Muscle on the Mountain. In over 580 episodes comprising 12 years of classic restos, I can count on one hand the amount of times an event has been cancelled due to bad weather. But before we go any further, one interview that was a hit on last year's show was Kate and her 1955 VW bus. So here is a Muscle on the Mountain flashback. And here we are at the incredible 2018 Muscle on the Mountain. Hello Kate. Hello Fletch, how are you going? I'm good, you? It's early. Yeah. It's foggy. You get that on the big jobs. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful day though. Absolutely. This 1955 bus. All right, here we go. We start off the show. It's a Volkswagen product. I thought you can be the bus of the episode, Kate. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us a story. What's going down with this vehicle? This was my 40th birthday present um, from my husband, who is a mechanic. And between us, we've restored it together over the last eight years. Boy, hasn't he scored some points. He's done very well for himself. He's done very well. <laughs> that is amazing. I uh, Look, I love it. Okay, here we go. Uh, we've got this thing that looks at you, the bright work, the paint work, the interior. Uh, as soon as, uh, it's the sort of vehicle on approach, uh, coming onto the grounds, that it really does stand out. Now, condition-wise, before the restoration, Kate, tell us about that. We um, got it um, locally. It was blue. The, the white that you can see on top was blue all the way down, and then it was grey at the bottom. The interior was rattan, and it had a bed here in the back. But we had the vision of what we wanted to do with it. Um, it is a split screen with the, the push-out safari windows. Aren't they cool? They are gorgeous. Um, it didn't have safari windows when we actually got it, so we were able to purchase them and put them in, which really uh, finishes the look, I think. Tell me, Kate, what is it about these vehicles? Once upon a time, with all due respects, you couldn't give these things away. And now the fraternity is so strong. It's powerful. It's not just here in Australia. It's, it's global. It's worldwide. There certainly has been a resurgence in the love of this car. And I think it's just the look of it. Um, people, whenever they see it, they just they smile, um, they do this at me all yeah. the time. That took a little bit of getting used to. It's just Maybe something. they went, when they gave you those fingers, maybe they didn't like you, Kate. <laughs> Everybody likes me. I know, <laughs> I know. how could, how could, uh, how could they not? Now that I've got a combi. But, but they do stand for fun. It goes, uh, back to the, it goes back to the hippie era, doesn't mm -hmm. it? And everybody wants to tell you their story mm -hmm. about um, their experience with a combi, mm -hmm. whether they had an old one when they were kids, mm -hmm. you know, mum and dad might have had a camper and they used to go to holidays mm -hmm. on, on them and generally they didn't love them, yeah. um, which is the interesting part as well. Well, they held up all the traffic on every main highway. Yeah, it broke down everywhere. Yeah, yeah. That's right. The only time the traffic could pass is when they broke down. <laughs> when they stopped. <laughs> I've got a tremendous amount of respect for these in terms of what we've just spoken about, how they've uh, come through the decades uh, in the popularity stakes. Yeah. Um, little things I've noticed. Uh, tell us about the steering wheel. Now, is that an original wheel on this bus? No, and that is the joy, actually, of restoring a Volkswagen because they do have spots where they're renowned for rusting out. So be it the, the floors, be it the sills, um, particularly at the front, you can get a lot of rust in, in those areas. And luckily you are able to actually purchase panels uh, when you're doing a restoration um, rather than bog, bog, bog. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that, that's always, um, that's good. <laughs> How does it drive as a bus? Do you enjoy driving it? I do. You've got to drive it. You know, it's only four speed. Sometimes I, I would love to have that, that fifth gear yeah. in it. Um, but that's part of the enjoyment as yeah. well, yeah. you know. And it, you, my top speed, you, I'm lucky if I get to 100 comfortably. Yeah, people just love seeing it. 
That's right, and that, that doesn't matter about top speed with these types of cars. And motorists uh, what, what, watching the show, I, I think in this day and age, you'd like to think that the average person on the road gives these types of vehicles a little more space. They're a little bit more lenient with Absolutely. them. Um, they go slow down around me, actually, to admire it often when they're passing me yeah. on the highway. You'll see that the whole car slows down. Yeah. Kids will look out. Yeah. yeah, it's great. Kate, it was lovely talking to you. It was lovely talking to you too, Fletch. Thank you. Uh, yourself and your husband, attention to detail with this bus 100 out of 100 I hope you have a wonderful day here today at Muscle on the Mountain Thank you Fletch I spend a lot of time out here the RT Charger's the real deal an E49 remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go so Shannon's laid up cover helps protect my restorations I'm Mopar through and through it's a passion Shannon's understands I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. Alrighty, the Muscle on the Mountain tribute show for 2019. How are you, John? I'm wonderful, thank you, Fletch. That is great. You have got an incredible car here. These Buicks have always intrigued me. You know, you've heard me say before, Buick have always built a fine motor car. We've got a 1936 car here. Tell us the story, John. Right. I bought it back in about 2012, 2013, and I bought it off Rockhampton Limousine Hire. Now, they hadn't used it as a limousine for quite a while. But originally, I ran into a mate of mine recently, and it was his car. It was traded into Pittsworth Machinery Dealers in 1960. He bought it and was working in Roma. So he took it out to Roma and sold it to Roma Taxis. Wow, it looks original. It's never been restored, but it's had paint, though. Am I, am I, is it correct to say that? It has been repainted, and the motor's been rebuilt probably in 1960-something. Wow. And it's just been a go ever since. These are the cars we hear stories about, uh, particularly the uh, 39, I guess, well, the straight 8 Buick, which this that's what this is. This is First gear, up mountains like that, pull anything. Now... You can lay testament to this. Yes. I First gear is only for getting the wheels rolling. Once the wheels are rolling, you go into second gear. Yeah. Second gear will take you up to 10 mile an hour. Everything after that is done at top gear. I wonder why they geared the thing so low in the back. To me, it sounds like it's got a 4-5 <laughs> rear. Well, they, they had no roads back. Even in the 30s, there were very few roads. And what were here were still dirt roads. This is interesting stuff. Could you just imagine the size of, well, I don't suppose many people had caravans back in those days, but the ability to tow with this car. I mean, let's face it, it's on a, it's on a truck chassis. And speaking of body, isn't it nice to see once again, we have our Holden emblem down there. Now, this is interesting as well. Holden here in Australia, building the bodies for Buick. Now, in 1936, John, how different would this Buick have been compared to, say, the 36 body in the United States? Right. Very different. In America, 36 was the first year of all steel bodies, whereas in Australia, they didn't have presses big enough to press the steel roofs. So this is the last of the timber-bodied Buicks. So the whole frame in that car is timber with just a sheet metal skin over it. Is there much difference uh, structurally between the 36 and the 39? Oh, yeah. yeah. Very much so. The, the 39 went to a bigger motor. They went to longer chassis, heavier bodies. So there's a fair bit of change. 37 was the real change here. 36 was going away from box square cars to rounded cars 
and then 37, they just made everything bigger and longer. <laughs> I mean, at first glance, when you look at this 36 car, it's typically as big as they went. Huge. They're a monster of a car. Yeah, they're a monster of a car, but you'll find 37 on. They were probably, I don't know, maybe two foot bigger. Yeah, why not? <laughs> It's still the philosophy of uh, the American engineering. They they just built these incredible cars. The suicide doors are interesting. Yeah. The, it was also the last year of suicide doors. John, looking at the interior now, original interior, that Art Deco dash, that's sensational inside. Sim- simple, but nice. Yeah. It's the same with the door trims. The door trims have got the same Art Deco pattern on the, the linings of the door trims and also on the window sills. So it flows through from the dash all the way through to the back windows. Yes, and without sounding like a cliche, but uh, one line that my father, Resty Soul, always used to say, it's the doctors and lawyers. Doctors and lawyers, back in the time, they were the people that had these motor cars. These were the upper echelon. These were very expensive cars, brand new. You would have been doing very well in 36 to have afforded one of these cars in Australia. Yes, very much so. John, it's been wonderful talking to you. Thank you. Um, it's not every day that you see one of these cars. It's always that, uh, I guess, the, the, the mystic of the mechanical side with the torque of the of the eight-cylinder engine. It is a big car, although, John, you've alluded to the Buicks being bigger again in, in later years. But, uh, mate, thank you for bringing it along. Thank you, Fletch. You're welcome. Well, it goes without saying, if you own a classic, it just has to be with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And if you're enjoying watching Classic Restos, over 300 episodes are awaiting you on the Shannon's Club. Have a look through there. There's a whole stack of really cool stuff for you to check out. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. Lucky enough to have with me now Cole, active member and coordinator. Now, Cole, mate, a washout for 2019, but hey, you stand for some great stuff. Yes, uh, Fletch, that's uh, welcome to Mullaney, but um, yeah, our, our muscle on the mountain has been going 10 years, and uh, this is our first washout, but we'll be back better, better next year, and um, yeah. yeah. The whole point of this tribute episode, obviously, is uh, well to to give the event some enhancement to let everybody know it's still on. We we can't help the weather, uh, and as I alluded to earlier, you stand for some great stuff. Uh, give us a rundown on that. Yeah, well, it's um, not only are we trying to raise funds, but it's awareness for for men's health, and uh, it's just grown over the last ten years. Mate, up here in the hills, uh, northwest of Brisbane as well, your location, it's your own little paradise here. Nice place to live. It is. It's one of the best places in Australia. And um, and the good thing here with our muscle on the mountain, just to drive up the range is, is worth it, you know. So, yeah, we're pr- pretty lucky being close to Brisbane and we're sort of central, you know. I think it's wonderful that you guys stand for such a great cause. You're in a, a great part of Queensland. And um, is there a bad part? It's a... a Regional Australia, need we say more? There's fantastic places everywhere. Um, but to think that the weather being so bad, um, what, 150 mil of rain in the, in the last week, uh, but there's still a handful of cars that have turned up here today to, to at least uh, allow an episode to happen. Yes, that's right. And, and it's this Mustang right here behind us. It's, it's come from Bundaberg. So. Who, who, yeah, who, who owns this one, uh, Cole? Oh, he's just a... A tourist, a car enthusiast. That, um, Wouldn't be the bloke next to me, would it? <laughs> yeah, should be. All right, mate, tell us quickly about your car. My car? Um, I, I have several um, that I'm working on, so uh, I'm more of a hot rodder, so a Model A hot rods and, and, and building them. So, But um, I just seem to be uh, working on everybody else's, not my own. The same old story, but... It's a good car behind us, the Mustang? It is, it is. It's uh, original condition and uh, 289, four barrel. So um, yeah. Yeah. They were a, a little screamer, weren't they? And a, a fairly small displacement to put a, a four barrel on, but they just work so well. That's right. Yeah, they can be thirsty with fuel, but um, this is a 67 model, so it's, you know, a mint condition. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Cole, thank you for turning up today, mate. But before uh, we let you go... Words on 2020. Yeah, we're expecting weather again, if it is, uh, is what rules it. But uh, 5th of July, 
We want everybody there. Mm. You know, we had nearly a thousand cars last year, and yeah. it's it's been getting bigger and better every year. Yeah. So. But, I can, I'm an advocate for it. Make a trip out of it if you can. It's an, it's an awesome show. It really is. Uh, it's the old story with, uh, with, um, with all of our car shows, uh, events that are on. Check the Shannon's Club, uh, the events section there. All the car shows are there. And, uh, of course, you know, social media pages as well. Cole, in the meantime, thank you very much, mate. No, thank you. Thank you, Fletch. We've always had a few cars. They're all special. The T-Bird. Oh, that's mine. The Combi for when we want to get away. The XR8. It's going to be a classic. They're all insured with Shannon's. We've also got Shannon's home and contents cover. Which helps protect our automotive collectibles, tools and memorabilia in the home and garage. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, it's got to be. Shannon's. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. If you have a restoration project, Hair and Forbes has the tools that you need. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits, and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Hair and Forbes has the range. How you doing, Blue? Very good. Fletch, yourself? Good, mate, good. A great time for today to have you on the show. I love this car. It's a beautiful car. 1929 Model A. Uh, pretty well first, second year of the A's? Second year of the A's. Uh, 28 to 31 was the A's. What year did the timber spokes leave us? 1927, they uh, left a Model T and uh, done a pre-runner to the Model A with a few trial runs on the Model T. Yeah. Yeah. What a beautiful car this is. Here with a splendid backdrop. Um, this car here, with it's beautiful colour. The red, uh, the black fenders, the running boards. You've got your, your shell, the, the can there on the running board. It just certainly depicts a time. Right down to even the wind deflectors, the, the glass wind deflectors blue. The wind deflectors are magnificent, particularly in the rain. It pushes the rain around the side and with the side curtains down, you hardly even get wet. It's tremendous. When you drive this car, does your mind ever wander? Does it take you back to imagine what it would have been like back in 1929? Oh, for sure. The, the nostalgia of the motor car, the feeling, uh, the, the uniqueness of the car driving on the road, that feeling is still there. Uh, and the Model A is uh, capable of keeping up with modern traffic, uh, up to 50 mile an hour or 80 kilometres nowadays. And to drive that car and still have the feel of 1920, your mind does wander back and you think, here I am in 1920 some days. Uh, yeah. We're talking almost a century, 90 years here of, of technology. Um, as basic as they are, we still have the internal combustion engine up front. Exactly right. The, the auto cycle or the four-stroke engine is unchanged in the cycle. It's had a few modifications over the years with timing and uh, fuel injection and a few other bits and pieces, but the original principle is exactly the same and a magnificent piece of machinery. Incredible displacements on these engines as well. We're talking four cylinders, but huge capacity. Give us a rundown there, Blue. 200 cubic inch of uh, internal capacity uh, through a three-speed transmission uh, still produces uh, uh, close to 50 mile an hour, uh, probably even 60 on it when it's new. But, uh, yeah, beautiful piece of machinery. Uh, almost one litre per cylinder in, in today's terms. Yeah. I just have so much respect for this. We're talking off camera to Blue. These cars, it's, it's like talking to a grandparent or the way we're progressing now, one of their parents. And um, it is about respect. And I think it's a nice story when, uh, when you were touring um, that there was a, a semi-trailer behind you and you were, you've got a UHF radio here and about what he said to you about being in the way. Well, we're, this fellow followed us for around about 100 kilometres and uh, we pulled over because we thought we are slowing him down. And he just got out and he said, uh, appreciates a good motor car and he liked to follow us to look at the car. And he sat there for 100k behind us, so that's a, that's a good compliment, I think. Getting back to the wire wheels, Blue, what size are we looking at? 21 inch in diameter, uh, 3.5 inches in, in uh, width. So a uh, really fat tyre for its age. Obviously, too, that diameter working in with the gearing. Yes, for sure. Uh, it's, uh, Henry was a, a magnificent uh, designer and everything was uh, put together to, to give him the best performance for what he had. And here's a testimony to it 90 years later, still going. And speaking of that testimony, if you would like a up close and personal look at the interior, here's a quick run through from Blue.
Okay, this is a Model A, pretty basic, uh, fuel gauge in the centre here, and uh, it's foolproof, it's just a plonk bottle cork hanging in a fuel tank with a bit of wire that moves the indicator up and down, as it reads empty, it's really empty, uh, have a dash light in the middle, obviously ignition key, uh, amp gauge, and a barrel speedo, and uh, that was what you had in the mo basic Model A, in later years I've put in uh, 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 oil pressure gauge and a temperature gauge just for long touring. Up here on the steering column you have advance and retard lever which moves the, the timing and the distributor as you're moving. On this side here you have a hand throttle or a early, very early cruise control but you've got to be quick enough to push it off when you get into traffic. In the centre you have the horn and here you have the light switch, low beam, high beam. And on the Australian models you went back one you had a parking light for the rear which was just a brake light that come on over night time and uh, off positions in the middle. Uh, basic three-speed gearbox, uh, reverse. Uh, this, this car was also the first of the conventional gearboxes that we know when you put your foot on the clutch, the clutch would disengage the engine from the gear train and uh, this is the first conventional gearbox in a, in a modern car. Uh, on the floor down here we have the foot uh, solenoid for starting we have the accelerator in the centre, we have a normal clutch, a brake, and the brakes are all mechanical, uh, four wheel mechanical brakes. Blue, what I love about this, about you loving the passion of the car and sharing it with others, it's fantastic to think that you've got a 1929 device that you've got so reliable in 2019 you drive it into other states. That's correct. We we did the uh, five thousand five and a half thousand kilometres in twenty days. We went from Mullaney here to Murray Bridge for the Model A Nationals. Two years prior to that I went with Ben to Darwin in a Model A. Uh, we were also twenty twenty something days on the road. Just magnificent. And uh, with a Model A on the road with a half inch 916 spanner and a screwdriver, you can do a major rebuild. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love that? You have to love it. Mate, it's a credit to you. I take my hat off to you. Uh, you're preserving this car. Good on you, mate. Well done, Blue. Thanks, Fletch. Good to talk to you. Cheers. Thank you. Well, battling the weather conditions as we are, we're getting through the day slowly, aren't we, Ben? Well, yeah, we're definitely getting uh, wet backsides, and uh, yeah, as far as the wet goes, it's here. We're working with what we've got. Now, you've got uh, a fairly unique Bentley here. Yeah, it's 1948. It's been around for a long while. It's done a lot of miles for me. And uh, Alec Fong Lim, our Lord Mayor of Darwin, back in the early days, used to own it. I used to do the general maintenance on it. And, uh, yeah, when he, before he passed away, he suggested to his wife that if she did want to sell it, to give me first option on it. Hence, I ended up with it. A British car, a big heavy car, what is it like to drive? Oh, uh, still feels heavy in spite of its uh, reputation at, uh, compared to a modern car. It's still, uh, you know, a heavy motor car, but it really, really holds the road well. Um, interesting history too. 1921, the first year of Bentley, going through to 31. So they just had the 10 years and then Rolls-Royce took them over from that point. But carried the traditional mark all the way through to even current day. Yeah, the uh, obviously it was a good brand and uh, everybody liked it and it was selling cars and I guess that's the way to go. You can't make, can't keep producing cars unless you're selling them. Ben, big car, long nose cone, sumptuous interior, nice wedge styling out the back, even right down to the, the foot there representing somebody that you've got hiding in the boot. Yeah, we put him in the boot because he was acting up too much, but his, his foot didn't quite fit. And we realised after a while he stopped screaming, it was good, eh? <laughs> Run us through uh, engine and drive line. What's going on there? Oh, it's only four and a quarter litre, and um, it's got a four-speed gearbox, but the gear shift's on the right-hand side, not on the left or in the middle, as oh, not in the middle as more, most normal cars. But, uh, yeah, and it's it's... Beautiful old car and it's comfortable and it stops well. Yeah. That's all you really need, I guess. The economy is not real flash. If you can relate to miles per gallon, yeah. it's 18 miles per gallon. Yeah. But wealthy people never worried about fuel economy. Exactly right, yeah. If you own one of these things, you don't worry about fuel economy back in the old days. In terms of uh, classic restos, what year did the restoration take place on this car? Uh, it never even went through a full restoration. I had a, a repaint done on it. Oh, 20 odd years ago, and uh, 
apart from that, not a not a great deal. I, I did a gearbox kit in it at one time, but yeah. apart from that, not a not a lot. It's very faithful. Ben, it looks like a heavy car. One thing about the the British cars, they always used to throw a lot of metal at them, didn't they? Yeah, I guess it, uh, he needed to do something because the old rust and the uh, from the salted roads and everything, you need to get a fair bit of metal in there to rust away over the years. Mm. And uh, if you made them too light and thin, they fell to bits too quick. Yeah. Metal's come a long way. What was it like back in '48? Not real good. Just after the war, there wasn't a lot of good steel around, mm. and uh, the old Bentley suffered a lot from that sort of you know corrosion problems. And uh, so some of that work had to be done. At, keep it right up to shape yeah, yeah. but yeah no it was just back in, the, in the, them days it, mm. it was a, an upmarket car and this you got what you got as far as steel went yeah. but the workmanship and everything it was beautiful ben it's been wonderful catching up with you mate sharing the passion with your car with us today mate well done thank you thanks a lot fletch good one Whilst in Mullaney, Fletch chooses to stay at the Bridal Guest House. Mountain views to a gorgeous backdrop. Central stylish accommodation with a rustic charm. An absolutely beautiful place to stay for an ideal romantic getaway, even if you are with yourself. Well, there you have it. That's a wrap. I hope you really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Rest Days, a tribute to the Muscle on the Mountain event happening each year in Mullaney, just northwest of Brisbane, here in Queensland. As I say at the end of every episode of Classic Rest Days, until next week, no matter where you're watching the show from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. <laughs>